This episode is brought to you by Neox Marketing. Are you looking to upgrade your business? Do you want to develop your marketing skills but have no idea where to start? <laughs> Boy, do I have a deal for you. With promo code SMACKTALK, you can get not 25, not 50, not 60, 80% off their marketing ebook. That comes to a total of $2. Yeah, this ebook has everything, okay? It took a year to make, it's simple to use, so you can get started ASAP. So Johnny, you're saying you can get an entire ebook, an entire ebook, a step-by-step -step guide for scaling my business for only $2? That's exactly what I'm saying. With promo code SMACKTALK, you can use it at checkout or click the link in the description. That is promo code SMACKTALK for 80% off your purchase. S-M-A-C-K-T-A-L-K. -A -A tell a friend to tell a friend and enjoy the episode. Peace. Out of here. No sad. He crushed it. And the Red Sox have you. taken the lead. Bitch, put some respect on my name. Yeah. When you speak on me, you speak on the guy. All right, guys. Welcome back to Smack Talk. Today's guest, he is not only a rugby player, but he was also captain for Ottawa U's rugby team for four years. A multiple-time All-Star and academic All-Canadian. U Ottawa President's Trophy winner. MVP award winner, U Ottawa valedictorian, assistant head coach, uh, sorry, assistant coach and head recruiting coordinator for the Ottawa UGG's men's rugby team. Ladies and gentlemen, James Fleming. <laughs> What's up, brother? Happy to be here, my man. Hey, man. Fuck. Welcome, man. Welcome to Quebec, the dark side. How was parking? Parking was a nightmare, <laughs> and uh, hence the color. Uh, <laughs> Look, man, I'm just happy to get inside the building, yeah. see you, have a nice drink on the table. and uh, Hell we're, yeah, we're man. I love the now. vibes, bro. Hey, I want to talk about rugby. I was always fascinated by rugby, ex-football player. I like the culture behind it. I just, like, why rugby, man? That's a great question. Uh, so when I was grade nine, I did the football thing. Yeah. I did my soccer thing, hockey, all that. And then after that sort of, when I was playing some football and some soccer, uh, the rugby coach was like, well, why don't you also come play rugby? Hmm. I was like, all right. Coach's name was Sean Arbuckle, and now we're fellow teachers, so that's kind of funny. And I saw him recently at Offset, and cool moment. But yeah, honestly, it was because of him. And uh, from there on, I kind of just fell in love with in the game because being a guy that had played football before, I was like, well, hmm. now I get to play running back and linebacker because yeah. you get to play both ways of the ball in rugby, right? Yeah. So I kind of looked at it that way. I was like, all right, this is pretty dope. I'm having a good time. Did and you find similarities between both sports? Definitely. Yeah? Like Camaraderie? Oh, big-time camaraderie. Uh, less hate for your opponent after the game. Because, hmm. uh, like, in rugby, like, you know, after the game we have what's called beer-ups or a social, and, like, the home team will host you. So, so if, British, dude. So let's say, let's say we go to McGill, right? Yeah. They'll bring us down to their pub after, and then you nominate like a man of the match. You have a chug off with them. You know they put in a nice spread for you, shake hands. You know you went to battle and you respect each other for that, and you go away. Whereas, okay, so it's the greatest fucking sport of all time. One could say that. Yeah. Oh my god, dude, a beer up? That's awesome. Yeah, it's sick. And then like whereas when I was playing football, right, yeah. like it was like nah, fuck Ma fuck McMaster, fuck Queens, fuck Western, like everybody. Nah, like we didn't like no one, and they were all the enemies. And mind you, like. That's our mindset before the game about any opponent we're playing. You're going to war, man. That's right. But yeah. then the second it's over, it's like, well, life goes on, and we're both here for the same reason. Like, both human. We can have a beer over that. Wow. Yeah. That's so fucking cool. You grew up in Belleville, right? That's right. So when did you move to Ottawa? For, for university. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I spent a few summers in Belleville still after, mm -hmm. and then kind of after that, I was like, all right, like, let's branch away from home a little bit, you know find my own place for the summer, stick around, kind of see what Ottawa has to offer. What's, like, your first athletic, like, what's the first sport you went into? Hockey. Hockey? Hockey. Yeah, okay, then you played hockey, then football. How old were you when you, played, when you started to play football? Grade 9. Grade 9, too? Yeah, it was okay. just football season came before rugby season. Yeah. So when did you make the decision, like, you know what, dude, rugby is, I'm all in. Like, I'm all in. I want to do this for a career. Mm hmm So that would have been after first year university. Okay. Because I started off playing university football, mm -hmm. and then I kind of just, various things happened in life, 
and uh, I wasn't able to come back in time for football training camp because I blew my knee. My dad was at home sick. I asked the coach, I said, look, can I come back in three weeks? And he said, well, we'll have to redshirt you then and you're going to lose your scholarship. So for me, that was kind of like, I'm not being redshirted. I'm not losing my scholarship mm -hmm. and I want to be with my dad because he's sick. And, you know, like my knee's not healthy. I'm not just going to sit there and watch. So my friend Christopher Thomas, he was the captain of the Gigi's at the time for rugby. He's like, look, our camp doesn't start for two and a half, three weeks. And if you're not ready for the first few days, that's fine. But why don't you come out? Mm -hmm. So I said, all right, let's give it a go. Got nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I can't like my plan was, you know, play rugby for that semester, then rejoin football in the winter and yeah. pursue the dream again. But then I had such a good time with Gigi's rugby. I was like, nah, like I'm good and I'm never looking back. Damn. So, you want like, look, dude, I, I know you mentioned, do you want to talk about your dad? Sure. How big of an impact did he have in your life, man? It was huge. Yeah. Like, uh, kind of just like my mannerisms, even like the things that I enjoy, the teams that I cheer for, uh, the way that I carry myself, like through sports passionately and in life with my sense of compassion, sense of humor, even at that, like mm -hmm. my dad had a ton of influence. Who is your dad? My dad's named Wayne Fleming. Mm -hmm. So what did you, what do you do in life? He was a comedian and an actor, mm -hmm. and uh, he also hosted a radio show. Nice. Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, rest in peace, by the way. Yes, thank you for that. Hey, man, he, um, he made an absolute stud, so he <laughs> should be proud. He should be proud. Appreciate hey, man, that. Yeah, you mentioned that you had a disagreement with your football coach. What was that about? Uh, or, your, or your rugby coach? My rugby? No, it, uh, that made me join rugby? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was football. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was basically, uh, so I blew my knee in mm -hmm. spring camp. And then, uh, so my timing for my ACL return wasn't going to be good enough for August, but they had me slated to return in September. So basically, it was actually right when the OUA and the CIS, which is now U Sports, started doing their roster cap at 110 and then 90. So you could, so 90 you could carry that are able to dress, and then 20 red shirts. Um, so for me, I knew that I couldn't participate in camp as a player, but they wanted me to come, obviously, get my mental reps, watch film with them, and whatever. And, my proposition, because my dad had COPD, which is lung disease from smoking cigarettes, I mm -hmm. said, look, like, can I please stay home with him, and then I'll come rejoin the team after. Like, I just wanted a, three weeks of leave because I wasn't healthy in the first place. Yeah. And, you know, for all I knew, that was going to be my last days with my father. Mm. And at the end of the day, I was kind of put into a corner where it was, you know, come to football camp or don't be with your dad. <sighs> and at the end of the day, for me, like, there's nothing bigger than family and that's what I just had to do. There is nothing bigger than family. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that's why I fell in love with football too. Because you actually, it feels like family. 100%. And rugby, like how many players are on the team? Uh, well, rugby's interesting. 25 on game day. Okay. But there's... Like, like practice squad and shit? Well, we, they, so there's no practice squad in rugby. Okay. There's 1XV, 2XV, 3XV, whatever. So we just call it like RICQ, developmental etc okay so what we do is like in rugby there's a league called the 1xv and that's what you'd see that's what counts that's oua rcq etc etc mm -hmm. that's what everyone sees but what people don't see is that there's a development league so guy number 26 to 50 they're playing in that developmental league against the other team's developmental teams hmm. so in that way you're still getting meaningful minutes and game reps whereas in football like if, if you're it's not, like minor leagues kind of yeah, like consider the AHL to the NHL. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you can get called up. That's right. Hmm. Yeah, like it, it, any given week, like one guy can drop, one guy can go up. It's back forth. How's the rugby culture in Canada? It's good. Your opinion. I want your fucking the truth, dude. <laughs> I think I think there's a we lot can of improve. things that, like from a culture standpoint, <laughs> yeah. that like is is people are doing it right, especially at the club level. I think the higher up you go, like you experience a bit of nepotism and things like that you know coaches that are living in certain areas think that you know the players that are in their areas are the best players and no one else deserves consideration i've experienced that like through watching what's happened to my friends and some other people um i was lucky enough that uh, i was provided with opportunities despite being in an area in ottawa where there's no real national team headquarters or anywhere where for a long time anybody gave a shit about mm -hmm. but uh yeah so i'd say like from a selection standpoint, it gives like a bit of like Hockey Canada vibes. Okay. We're, but uh, culture standpoint, like everybody here gets it. And like if you threw us in with the UK guys when we go on tour, like it's, it's two peas in a pod. It's awesome. Really? 100%. How are the UK boys, man? Like how's the – like can you compare both cultures? No. Not at all, eh? <laughs> They're they crazy. Have, they have academies, yeah. right? They do. Okay. And so it's like, it's like soccer. Yeah. And first and foremost, they're way better than us. 
Well, but, dude, uh, it's molded in their culture. Yeah. You know? But the thing is, like, you get guys here that'll go play with them. And, like, mm -hmm. generally, we actually probably will have the better athlete. It's just that they're so polished. Um, but the UK guys are crazy. The parties are insane. Their rules are nuts. But the lads. We, we adapt. We, so we adapt their rules. Like, they teach us rules, and then we'll do it. Like, I've been on a few tours where we amalgamate teams with, like, guys from, you know, Scotland, Luxembourg, and then Canada. And then we'll just go on a, like a tour and enter like men's elite division. And then uh, so you meet them, you learn all their rules, and then you really get to kind of em embrace their culture. What but do you then, mean their rules? There's different rules? Yeah. So you want to learn some? Dude, rugby 101. Let's go. Okay. Fuck yeah, dude. So if you've seen Hell the way yeah. I'm drinking this, it's always with my left hand. Okay. Because their rule is a gentleman shake with their right. Yes. So you always have to have your right hand available to shake. Hmm. In the same breath. That means you can't hold two drinks because you're double parked. One should always be finished because you need a hand available to shake. If you're holding two, it means you're not drinking fast enough. Okay? Whereas sometimes there are exceptions. Mm -hmm. And then wh what you always might have noticed is I always put my finger under my drink. That's called the wickets. Because if you don't have your pinky under your drink, then you're not securing it enough, and gentlemen don't spill drinks. <sighs> in the same light. I like that shit, man. In the same light, my drink's far away from the edge, right? If it's close to the edge and someone can come up close enough that they can go like this and touch your thumb to it, you got to skull it because it's too close to the edge. Because, again, gentlemen <laughs> don't spill their drinks. Wow. So, yeah, those like little simple rules like that, they'll just get you with. And if you get caught doing it, down, batting down the hatches. Oh, my God. Yeah, so you guys are just absolutely blitzed. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's incentive to... Uh, to get loaded on tour but. fuck man that that's a really cool culture like i saw videos for uh the rugby sevens uh, i think it was hong kong rugby sevens yep buddy like that's wild it's sweet man holy shit like yeah. like everybody's like oh tailgate tailgate no 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 guys you have no idea what you're missing out on <laughs> no it, it, crazy it's insane yeah. my, my friend elias actually just played in hong kong with canada so that was kind of cool from from afar so you played in the rugby sevens I did for a bit. Okay. Yeah. How was that experience? It, it was great. Um, my first one came in Italy um, in 2018. Or no, 2018 or 19. Right before the pandemic. Yeah. Um, I had just gotten some treatment done on my back. I had sciatica. Mm. And then I got the call. And I was like, oh, fine. Like, I'm making this work no matter what. Like, yeah, yeah. Here we go. That's that rugby mentality, yeah. man. Fuck so yeah. Then, uh, We're I not might... basketball players. Yeah. <laughs> so then, uh, like, I probably shouldn't have. But yeah. I should have. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So then I called up the local physio in Bevel. His name was Matt Wong. And I was like, look, man, like, my back's fucked up, but I need you to get me ready. So then I was coming in two, three times a week, and this guy was cranking me, putting needles all through me. And, and you know, he's a brilliant man. And yeah, he, yeah. Got, he got me ready in time. But I had about nine days between then and the world tournament to exercise. So I didn't get to lift or run for six months. And <sighs> then I had – so then I had nine days to get out and run. Start pumping some weight. At that point, was pretty much useless. Mm -hmm. But it was something. And then, so then I just had to go to the tournament and lace up. And it was a great opportunity. I met some awesome guys that uh, I still associate with today. And yeah. uh, it was cool for me in a way because I think that really opened the door for my guys at U Ottawa to start to get some exposure because I was the first guy from U Ottawa to play Canada at that time. And uh, now we got a bunch of guys that are doing it. Guys that are in the major league rugby and stuff like that. And I'd like to think that that was the kind of the the trail starting to get blazed mm -hmm. if you know what i mean yeah. so i'm thankful for that opportunity not only for myself but just kind of really open the door for my guys here and hope that that can just continue through the hmm. future how much uh, like how much money does a um, rugby player make like a, like, a, like the, the creme de la creme like what is the top salary of a rugby player like the best guys will be like low one millions Okay. Yeah. Fuck, it's not. It's pretty good. No, not I, at I, all. I expected fucking way less than that. No, no. Like, what's like the NFL league of like rugby? Would it be like UK? Like, how does it work? Is there like a league with like different countries in it? Like, how does it? Yeah, it'd be like Super League and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't watch. You don't watch it? No, I don't. I, I only watch the international tours or or when they do what's called Six Nations. So okay. It's like Six Nations that go for a big cup. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I'll only watch uh, MLR, which is like Major League Rugby, which is in North America, because my friends play in it. Okay. I spend the majority of my time watching NFL, NBA, and NHL Okay. when it comes to sports. You're an NFL fan? I am. Who's your team? Philly. Really? Mm -hmm. Are you a bandwagon fan? Be honest with me, James. No, I've been okay. there since... I would say the McNabb era. Okay. Holy so. fuck, eh? With Terrell Owens? Yeah. Yeah. Like, right about then is when I started to really get into football and understand it. And yeah. Then, yeah. With Vic, too? 
with Andy Reid in that offense. Those were fun teams. It was fun teams, man. D-Jax, LaShawn McCoy. That was a fun team. D-Jax, man. What a stud. Mm -hmm. Back then, man. Unstoppable. Fuck. I'm a Ravens fan. Okay. I rate that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, This year. I think we're going to have a good year this year. You guys, you must be heartbroken, dude. Yeah, I'm, I still think about that James Bradbury holding. You guys, penalty. you guys literally made no mistake. You deserve the Super Bowl. You really do. I was like, holy uh, fuck, dude. Jalen Hurts is the, is lights well, he out. He was perfect. Perfect. Yeah. The whole playoff run. Yeah. Damn. I mean, at the end of the day, if you don't win, you don't deserve it. But I feel what you're saying. They were deserving. Yeah. I got you. Like yeah. they didn't fuck up. You nah. walk except for James Bradbury. But yeah, but even then, like, you gotta get a stop eventually. Like, Hurts can score as many times as he wants, but if you can't stop Mahomes, I don't know what to tell you. That's the thing. Yeah. Fuck. What, um, for the Rugby Sevens, dude, like, where did you, uh, like, what country, like, blew you away the most, like, culture-wise for rugby? Dubai. Dubai? Dubai. Really? Dubai was incredible. Really? Yeah. So, do, like, Dubai has their own team? Or the, the mm. tournament in Dubai? The Dubai Sevens is a tournament. Okay. And it's on the world circuit. And it's... What's the world circuit? So the world circuit is the, it's like a seven circuit where there's stops all over the world. Whoa. So like Hong Kong would be one of them, Singapore, South Africa, so on and so forth. And Dubai is one of the stops. And it's just this massive tournament where on top of the international matches, they have a zillion different divisions all the way down to men's social and then juniors and stuff like that. And there's nine pitches. I believe it's nine. And so there's rugby just going on all day, all the time. There's DJs everywhere. There's pools. There's like a giant party at the end where they bring in like a, a DJ and then everybody in the tournament, like whether you were top of the top or bottom of the bottom, like everybody's just amalgamated. Mind you, like there's a bar after where people go and not everyone goes there, but uh, it's nuts, right? So like, it's just rugby culture and everyone who's playing in the tournament, especially after they're done, just gets blitzed and watches like the, the final day of international matches. And so it's just this loud stadium, kind of what you'd see on TV, but they're all rugby players. Oh and my just, god, dude. Yeah. What are the countries you've been to? Oof. Uh, most like a lot of Europe. Okay. Obviously here the US. Yeah. Uh United Arab Emirates. Um most of like kind of those like Central Americas, stuff like that. And then uh yeah, like th- that would be the majority mm-hmm. of it. But h- how's like the Canadian culture? You said like it's it it, it 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 you know, there's room there's room for improvement for sure. But like let's say when, like when you started in grade nine, like to now, like how, did it improve? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, eh? yeah. I think the like post COVID, it's kind of taken a dip because a lot of people became like a little more antisocial and they wanted to stay inside. They became a little more worried about everything. Return to contact sport. Oh, you know, I'm washed up now. It's been two years. Blah blah blah. Like you get you hear that a lot. Yeah. But it, it's coming back up, and I think the rugby one is getting better. Like, we've adapted sort of to modern systems versus, like, kind of the old-time thing. Like, I'll compare it to football, you know, like the 32-power, 20-dive kind of offense versus now, like, rugby's a spread-out game. Hmm. So, like, spread offense in, like, football now where it's a big passing game. Like, less less meat, more finesse and, like, structure and system and rhyme behind reason. So, I'd say in that sense, like, the game has advanced so far in Canada and – even now, like, with the growth of the women's game, too, right? Because now you get, uh, like, our women's program is prominent in women's sevens and fifteens. So you get a lot more women's clubs out there. And it's fantastic to have a men's and a women's club for your club. Yeah. Because, like, not only does it help network, but it just creates the vibe for everyone where it's not, not the old-fashioned way where it was 25 years ago when it was just the boys' game, you know? And then, like, the girls might might have and the girls are fucking good dude. and now they're damn good right? yeah so we like now we can go support them mm-hmm. when, and when they support us and this this stuff is reciprocated and it creates a fantastic culture so mm. i'd say, like it's it's definitely growing in canada i would just say that the one thing that we need to do and, and it started to happen is like people just need to start at a younger age like we're we're behind the eight ball there right like I, and it doesn't cost like it shouldn't cost anything man nah and, like, and compared to football and hockey like nah, no equipment right yeah The thing is, too, is, like, you got to, you know, you got to get people that are willing to coach. Yeah, I know. And It's hard, man. The more teams and age groups you create, the more coaches you need to find. And Mm -hmm. with rugby, it's not just, like, you can walk out and coach. Like, you need to be certified because, like, people are putting their necks in vulnerable positions. Like, they need – contact needs to be safe, things like that. So, like, 
then you have to go get people certified and there's only courses so many times like I've been waiting six months. I've done all my things to get my next certification, but there's just been no course appearing for it. Hmm. So it's yeah. like a PT uh, certification That's, kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> Man. Yeah, rugby is uh, – but look, I always compared both sports like rugby and football. Like football, you can really like – because rugby, when you're tackling somebody, you're putting your life in danger too. You know what I mean? You, you can get hurt as well. 100%. Football too. But football, you have equipment, man. I can run 15 yards right into your chest, dude, and break you in half, and I'll be fine. Yeah. If I do that in rugby, my shoulder is obliterated. That's right. So, <laughs> uh, you know, there's there's a certain level to it. Like, do you see a lot of concussions in rugby? Less than football. Less than football. One, it's the laws. So, like, we can't – we have to wrap. So okay, so you can't just fucking blindside somebody. No, you can't. Okay. So if you shoulder charge, it's no attempt to wrap. Since that's penalty back 10, you might even get – usually you'll get carded or, like, card work the same as soccer. Okay. Um, so a red card, you lose a guy. Yeah, and he's and he's gone for the game. Yeah. Usually gets a one-game suspension okay. or more after as well. Mm -hmm. um, you also have to tackle, like, to a certain height, like, you can't go high. Hmm. So not only do I have to wrap, but I can't smash you in the head. So those two things alone, on top of – I always found with football, like – Guys thought they were invincible because they had the helmet and the pads, including myself. Yeah, me too, man. Whereas when that comes off, you're a lot more conscious of your techers, right? Mm. Like my shin angle, my head's on the right side of the body. I'm punching through, like I'm wrap, I pull, like I drive through with my legs. Where in football, like I could launch myself at anyone in any way and they're falling down. Yeah. Whereas like rugby, it's so much more tactical. And What position do you play football? I played slot back and free safety. Ooh, free yeah. safety. That's why. Okay, now I get it. Now I get it. You have a little psychopath in you. 100%. Oh, I love it, man. <laughs> free safety is a great position. Why? Because you got a 20-yard head start on anybody. You can just fucking... They just tee off downhill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fuck, man. You're a teacher now. I am. How was that process? Well, what made you go into teaching? <laughs> Honestly... So I probably would have went into the trades if I was not planning to play university football in first year. But I needed to go to university for something. So I picked up some stuff and kind of just rode with it. And then when I left football and joined rugby, I was like, well, I'm going to stay in school. Obviously, I have to keep going. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at that and I said, well, what can I do with this? And I said, well, I don't know. Like, I've always kind of been a leader. I speak to people well, and I find I can get a message across, and I can connect with just about anyone. Because my life's had, like, financially a lot of ups and downs. I've, like, being super, like we've had a lot of money. We've been poor, blah, blah, blah. I've lived in different neighborhoods. I've dealt with all different types of people. Like, I'm in a big city now where there's, like, areas of a lot of wealth that I've been in. And the, but at the same time, like, I grew up in Belleville, like, right beside the projects, right? So in that way, I'm like, well, like, there's not really a person I can't connect with. Yeah. And then on top of just adding knowledge and leading and stuff like that, I'm like, I think I could teach. Let's give this a go. And then once you get to teacher's college, it's pretty easy. Like teacher's, teacher's college is a bit of a cakewalk. Yeah. Other than planning and actually practicing, the courses are just filler work. How do you find the social? Like, well, okay. You, um, do you want to say what school you uh, teach? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> No, I don't. No, no. Okay, good idea. Okay, good idea. Anyway, okay, it's private. I actually don't. It's yeah. private. It's it, private. It, it's a private school. So, do you <laughs> still deal with the social aspects? Because, um, like, I deal with uh, with uh, younger kids in public schools. Right. Uh, you know, social aspect is pretty much eighty five percent of my job, if not more. Right. Hundred percent. Do you deal with the same? You know, like from a socioeconomic standpoint, not at all. No. So the kids at my school are paying 30000 a year to go to school. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, right? That's crazy. And that's by choice. It's not like a university. Yeah. It's they're from grade 4 to 12 paying yeah. that much. So you don't, you don't see so much the financial troubles or growing up in rough neighborhoods. Like a lot of these kids have had a bunch handed to them in that way. Mm -hmm. However, like you still get like mental health issues and things like that where, you know, just because you have money doesn't mean you have happiness. Right. And I think everybody kind of knows that term and, and it's true. Right. And we're human beings and they're one way or another. Sometimes, you know, like you could be Warren Buffett's kid, but if your parents are divorced, right, like that, that's tough. Yeah. So like everybody has their own issues, but I would just say that socioeconomically that does not exist. So they have one <laughs> less issue to worry about. Yeah. They have a lot of but, sports too. Yeah, they do. A lot of like a, you know, good football team, basketball team and all, all that. And mm -hmm. I think it's important, man. It really is. You have to have the uh, like different avenues for kids. You have to have, you have to give them the options, man, cuz if Definitely. you don't have the options, they're just they're going to go towards what's easy. And whatever's mm -hmm. easy is, you know, 
the bat shit. I yeah. know, man. It's uh, it's really cool. Uh, how long you been doing it for? Teaching? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I guess like I started subbing when I was in university because the rule in Ontario is, is as long as you have one year of university and a clean criminal record check, which I do, um, you can go. Yeah, it's the like, same thing. You start teaching. Yeah. So I started teaching, and I'll go a bit off strand here. I think so. I started teaching like 2016 ish 17 but that was just sub work i started this was my first full year of like actually taking over courses that and there's a fucking that, difference that weren't that weren't placement yeah um so this is my first official year okay but uh my first day of teaching was fucked okay so i went to uh queen elizabeth public school in belleville when i was a kid so that was my alma mater and turns out i go back to supply there the principal is my grade eight teacher at now wow. and i was like oh it's kind of cool so then yeah. he, he sets me up he goes look there's this program called bridges the guy who runs it's like a great guy he played hockey at western like you'll have a good time with him and there's going to be some weeks where he's gone like can we just pre-book you and you come in and you do it? i said okay well no so what's bridges so basically it's a bridge program where kids that had behavior ieps which is individual education plan um they were removed from their class because they just can't function in there okay and this is grade one to eight and they just slap them all in a room so you could have anybody anywhere, and yeah. then, like, the incentive is is just to kind of prepare them to return to normal. It's like a rehabilitation program for yeah. students, which is yeah. insane. Or they wait um, until they're old enough to not be in school again, then they send them to adult ed, which yeah. they, yeah. So then, so then I'm, I, I get in there my first day, and this kid walks in. He goes, what's up, motherfuckers? And I was like, <laughs> I looked at the EA. She goes, no, he's allowed 10 swear words a day. So I said, okay, I guess he's got nine lives left. Uh, kind of funny. So yeah, yeah. for this, I was like, okay, like I'm in Belleville. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, just yeah. talking to Belvillians. Yeah, yeah. What's so up, like, motherfucker? <laughs> yeah, so I was like, all right, cool. So then, like, it was good. It was a good day. Everything was slowing smoothly, but at the same time, like, grade one to eight with behavior IEPs, like, it's so different. But, like, if you can get them to do, like, ten minutes of work, you've won the day. Exactly. Um, then we go to the gym. It's phys ed class, which I thought was going to be the most fun part of the day. And I'm like, this is a me thing. Like, let's do yeah. this. So then they, like, basketball is on the schedule. I was like, perfect. So we go in the gym. One half's playing, like, half court, three on three. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking the other kids, and we're playing bump. Bumps game's going great. Uh, making shots, bumping the balls. They're all laughing. I'm laughing. It's a good time. And then the EA's watching at the other end. And then all of a sudden, I just hear like a... I'm like... I look down. And then I just... One kid is like full mount. Another kid just fucking teeing off on him. I'm like, oh, shit. So then... But me, I'm like... I'm thinking in my head, I'm like... Like, with liability, can I touch this kid? Or did I just have to say like, please stop? Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I'm like... Got him in a fucking full Nelson, I'm like, yeah. Uh, so then the EA, she's like, Mr. Fleming, like, please, please. And I was like, I was like, I'm running over. I'm like, okay, okay. And then she's like, I'm like, can I, can I touch him? And she's like, yeah, yeah, go for it. So I was like, okay. So I just like pick him up and like fireman carry him over my head. <laughs> yeah. I put him down on a bench and I looked at him. I'm like, all right, you done? He goes, it's out of my system. It's like okay so then i had to go like help the other kid because he got beat up but and i was just kind of like okay like this is teaching but at the same time like there ain't many worse things that can happen now like there was a fight in my class dude kids like, are the worst though because yeah. they have no idea what consequence is mm -hmm. they have no idea so they'll try anything man that's what's scary that's what's scary about school shooters holy fuck we're going that way that's what's scary about school shooters seriously man because they they don't know the consequences they just act out on emo emotion and when you act out on an emotion dude they can get scary man. thousand percent yeah these yeah. kids man like fuck at least we don't have that we don't have those situations like in um the states that's wild man yeah it's crazy if you just put a law around carrying guns it doesn't happen but, no um. holy shit okay <laughs> jesus christ james <laughs> <laughs> so you won the u ottawa president's trophy and you got the mvp award at the same time yeah dude how the fuck did you balance that like a student athlete life how did you balance that to be honest it's not as bad as people think. Really? You just, like, I find the people that struggle. Do you study a lot? Do you, are you a guy that needs to study? No. Like, that's what I thought. Okay. I bought one textbook in my university career. Okay. Um, but the issue, like, and I would study when it was necessary. Yeah. But I would, I would ration my time. Like, when it was exam time, like, honestly, I didn't study till nighttime. I was like, I'm going to spend my day how I want to. It's sunny out. I'm yeah. having a good time. Because exams are always in, like, April, May. Yeah. No, it would have been April. But then, and then in the winter, like I'd go out play pond hockey or like go play in the snow or just something else. And then when it got dark, I was like, okay, now let's go to the campus and lock in. So I found that really helped. But then I'll say like in school is when people struggle the most because everyone studies for exams when exams come. But it's in like the middle of the semester when people slack. And it's basically this, right? Like it's like, do I want to sit down for two and a half hours and watch a movie? 
when I have that free time or am I just going to take it, plug away a little bit, right? A few times a week, plug away, review some things, review what I just like watched or listened to or in person and then, then I'm good. Where I find like the people that struggle, like they just put it off. They put it off. And even if they're student athletes, like I'd still be done most nights by seven or eight, right? Yeah. Dinner, I'd meal prep it so it was ready. I'd eat. And then, like, you'd get the guys that order a shawarma plate, so then they're waiting for the plate to come. They're watching YouTube. They hadn't showered after training. Like, they fuck around. That's and then, discipline, man. And then, it gets, and then it gets to 10, and then, they, you know, they watch some Netflix. They hopped on the PS4. And mind you, like, I'd have nights where I'd do that, too. Of course. But it's all about just understanding, like, every once in a while, if you just plug away at your work, whatever, or, or you know, when you're wide awake during the day, if you have some free time, pump out an assignment. You know, so I found those sort of things are what help balance it. So from the academic side, like as long as you just stay on top of it, kind of make a schedule and agree to yourself, like this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. The rest is just butter. But it's discipline. Yeah, it ha is. Have you always been disciplined? No. Okay, so no. You, de you developed it? Yeah, 100%. So like, and then again, like to you answer the, the athletic side of it, like yeah, the schedule was just there. I just had to commit to it. And then you put in a couple extra hours, of course, because – I don't know. Everybody's doing the regular ones. You got to put in extras if you want to be the best, um, and and that's part of what the culture we've established at our school is, and it works. But uh, no, I wasn't always disciplined, uh, especially elementary school was a write off. Uh, high school till halfway through grade eleven was a write off, and then one day it just clicked in my brain, and I said, "We got to get out of Belleville somehow. We need to lock in," and then from there on. I went as hard as I could on every assignment in high school. And I remember the first the first one I decided to go hard on was uh, I was in grade 11, but I was taking 12U Law. Mm -hmm. And the coach was my rugby football coach. And I pumped out an assignment for the culminating. It was like a 27-page uh, assignment of like what a prison institution would look like if I created it, <laughs> right? But I just went off, and it wasn't supposed to – like. It didn't need to be 27 pages. Yeah, but Jesus. I just did it. I was like, let's do it. Yeah. So then I got a 99, and then that's my, so my, fucking... my football buddies, they were just, and like rugby buddies, they were like, this is, like, he fucking, like, this is not him. Like, he copied that. And I'm like, no, I just tried. And, like, I don't want that to come off as arrogant, but it's just, like, I set my mind to something, and I said, from here on out, we're just getting after it. Yeah. But then, again, right, like, so that was that. I committed to the workouts. I committed to all my school. I got into university. Then for like a year and a half, two years of university, even then I was kind of like chilling, you know, 75s, 80s. Jesus. And then, and then like just, just getting by, yeah. playing football. Like the gym was number one priority. Oh, yeah, the field sure, was number yeah. one priority. Yeah. And mind you, football schedule is, is quite compact. And, and I would say like in first year, you're kind of figuring out how everything goes. But then after like when I got into year two and a half, three and onwards, like it, like I was kind of explaining to you earlier, like – just flip the switch again <laughs> fuck dude and uh what, what's the, what's the draft process like is it similar to the nfl well uh so there's three rounds in rugby okay for like so there's only a draft for mlr which is major league rugby in canada okay in north america um so that's like the mls kind of concept same same idea okay yeah um except they don't really get they're never going to get a messy to come across um or a back room, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, there's three rounds, and they're the only league currently that does a draft in the world for rugby. Hmm. It's an Americanized thing, right? Like UK and stuff. Like they sign you, they bring you up from clubs. Like they do it far differently. So the process for that. So American. It is. Um, <laughs> the way they do it, like, is the exact same. Like there's a combine. Um, teams call you, except you just don't do pro days. Uh, you send like. You upload your film to a yeah. portal. You officially declare for a draft. Um, you put in your name. Like teams will call you. You speak to the general managers, the coaches. You might go on a visit, et cetera, et cetera. Pretty much the exact same. Otherwise, hmm. the only thing that's different um, is because the MLR is new. That it's not like it's not like the NFL or NBA where you can just come from overseas and play in that country right off the bat. Like say like Giannis from from Greece when he kind of signed with that Spain team and he was just boom. Like, you have you have to uh, you have to have had like national caps if you played in Canada and want to go over to the states. So it's like visa requirements. And you stuff? need to get a work visa. And okay. since at this point, like the MLR is not like 
top turkey with those big four American leagues or even five because MLS is probably the same. Mm -hmm. So unless you have like professional experience somewhere else or you've played like nationally at the men's level for 15s, like you're not going to – it's it's hard to get a work visa and some teams don't want to go through that. Hmm. So, yeah, it can be a bit uh, – for the Americans, it's fine. Like they can get drafted right out of university, no problem. There's a million teams, whereas Canada, we have one. So unless you're getting picked by the Toronto Arrows, it, it, you have to go through all the visa stuff, which is non-domestic, and it, it, it can be a sticky process. So – a lot of American teams will lean towards taking Americans as a result. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, but do do UK uh, teams tend to come over to Canada and like recruit uh, players? Yeah, I got recruited to play in the UK, but at the end of the day, I wasn't a citizen there, so I can like the visa was going to be hard to do. Wow. Yeah. The because the place... league isn't big enough, like that's why the uh, the visa requirements like are different. Like, how does it like? Why would it be so different than like the NFL or the NBA or like? I don't understand. To be honest, I don't know. Like, I think other than the fact that it's just like multi million dollar, yeah. billion dollar corporations. Yeah. Versus. It's not lucrative enough. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, like I said, like the highest paid players in rugby are making just a bit over a million dollars, mm. whereas the highest paid players in baseball and hundreds and, of and, millions. And, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it, it's different in that sense, right? So the only place other than Canada that I could play pro without a visa, it would be the Netherlands because my grandparents and my mom have Dutch heritage. Really? My, my dad's Canadian, so. Like, wow, those, that's cool. Yeah, it is cool, but so yeah, like very limited because Canada and the Netherlands aren't rugby havens to say the least. Compared to, have you ever been to Netherlands? The Netherlands? I hate to say it, but I have not yet. Really? No. Fuck, you should, man. Oh, I really want to go. Wow. I really want to go. How's the rugby culture there? Like, do they have like ultras and stuff like uh, for soccer? Like, they have like crazy fans and like, they, does like every yeah. uh, city have their own like team? Like, I don't think the Netherlands are so really rugby. Heavy. Like, I, like I was talking to their national team coach and he was ready to bring me on, just cold turkey where it's, that's pretty hard to do elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So, I, like, they're ranked, like, less than Canada in the world. Like, they're, like, high 20s, low 30s range, which is super low in the rugby sphere. Okay. So, like, they're building, basically. And I don't know if too many people in the Netherlands are too passionate about rugby at What's the point. top rugby country? It has to be the fucking New Zealand, right? Uh, you'd be surprised. Really? Yeah. Because, like, New Zealand's, like, the fucking the, the All Blacks, right? So they've always been the cream of the crop. Yeah. And it's it's kind of been that way for a while with the haka like they have their own like they it's own so the sport cool. bro like in yeah. a in a sense like yeah. you know like it's our hockey right yeah um however like there's some countries that are starting to get pretty good like ireland france uh south africa and then you get new zealand right like i'd say like the ones i just named are probably like perennially your best teams england will always put a good foot forward um yeah <laughs> you played team canada Briefly, yes. Briefly, how does it feel, man, to represent your country? Does it like you? Did you take a, a second to realize, like, holy shit, dude, I'm repping my country right now? After, after. In the moment, I just figured it was. I'm, I'm just like, this is just me and some other guys that are really good rugby players, yeah. and we're just out to play some other really good rugby players, and I'm coming to punch them in the mouth. Like, I was still at that age where I hadn't compartmentalized like exactly what I was facing. Or the stage that I was on, like I knew it was sick, but I didn't really truly embrace it. Like we were, like we were signing autographs overseas, riding the bus in Italy. Like people are cheering for us. Like they loved it. And we're staying on a cruise ship. I was like, this is awesome, and I knew it was awesome. But now when I look back at it, I'm like, damn, like this is something nobody can ever take away from me. Yeah. Like if you're if you're describing me and giving a eulogy of my life at the end of time, one thing that they will always have to say is that I was able to play Even though you're country. young, do you feel fulfilled? I do and I don't. Uh, I feel like there was opportunity for me to take it further, and I wasn't able to. Um, do you want to elaborate on that? Well, I mean, like, it, it's a bunch of things, right? Like, I think, uh, one, the pandemic probably hit at the worst time for me because that was, like, right when I was coming into my prime and when I had started, like, getting traction with Canada, and then it, everything just stopped, right? Oh, so fuck, then dude. two years later... Canada has this thing where, like, when you're 25, 24, like, they start to be like, okay, like, wh what are the younger guys doing, right? Because they want to start young and develop you the whole time. Whereas, so when you start to get older, it doesn't matter how good you are, I feel like it, you kind of start to lose your opportunity because they'll just go younger. They're like, look, like, 
you're better than the 22 or 21 year old, but like we have five years to make him better than what you are right now. Yeah, well, same concept in football and stuff too, right? It is. So, so in that way, like I felt limited because I was like, this happened at the worst time possible. Then COVID happened, and my friends and I like we worked our ass off over COVID, and I I honestly was better when I came out of COVID, and then probably had one of my best years at U Ottawa the first year back from COVID, and then uh, I thought I was gonna retire, so I kind of chilled. And then I was like, wait, no, I'm not. But those months that I was chilling, I really just had a good time. Like I partied, I ate what I wanted, and I didn't care. Like I worked out once or twice a week for maintenance. But then I was just kind of like, look, like this is the first time in like a decade that I've just been able to do whatever I want. What weight did you play at? Like 220, 230? Yeah, usually between 220 and 230. Yeah. And that's still what I'm at now. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, dude. Absolute, yeah. absolute tank. <laughs> Look, no, like, those guys way bigger than me. <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. The fucking rugby players are monsters, mm-hmm. man. Fucking monsters. They are. But you can see, like with football, the trend right now is speed. Mm-hmm. Is it the same thing in rugby? Like, has that always been a trend, or is that like, are they developing like players to be more, you know? focused on speed uh, other than being like these big fucking fridge of human like you know what i mean like i mean speed's part of the training and it's important yeah but like when you're comparing anaerobic versus aerobic like rugby and football are so different because Hmm. we have to play 80 minutes right and football like you you get a play clock in between each snap yeah and i can chill i can rest so then it's like short fast twitch fast twitch fast twitch we're in rugby like i have to have fast twitch but I also have to have slow because I need to run for 80 minutes while I'm hitting people and getting them off the ground continuously and trying to break tackles, et cetera, et cetera. So, like, it kind of limits where we can get through that threshold of explosiveness because we have to stay fit. Yeah. So in, in, in that regard, like, the cardio, the cardio balance is kind of different. So, yeah. I, How so? You guys do more hit? Uh, or do. more... So we do a lot of like what's called tempo running. Okay. So you'll run, like say I put you on the goal line, three sets of 20, and you run like 90% of your speed. So like the gear just before you're sprinting, but you're doing your form and you'll run it like 70 yards. You get to the other end. You might do an up down or something just like that. And then you rest whatever's left on the minute. And then you do it back again and again and again. And then each week you just add two more, add two more. (laughs) So then – but you maintain the same pace, right? Like the whole idea is do not pick a pace where you're going to slack at the end. Like it has to maintain this curve, right? So it has to be linear. So then I take that the whole time. And then when I start at week one and doing three sets of 10, all of a sudden it's three sets of 25 and I'm the same level of fatigued, but I've improved by 15 sets. Holy shit. Yeah. So it, it's like, it's cardio in that regard where like, all, like it's, a, it's a long build up. But then when you're doing that, it's hard to get bouncy like we can and like you can do both at once but it's a fine balance and we have to really hit our target zones at certain training points of the season right like the closer you get to the season like you're worrying about conditioning but you also need to start getting explosive so you you shorten your range right like you're not squatting to depth you're probably squatting like quarter yeah yeah bing bing yeah stuff like that a lot of power cleans and stuff yeah okay hand cleans yeah box squats Mm -hmm. but they're like quarters and then like so what what is your like workout split look like this is like mondays or strength do you like strength conditioning and like how does it work do you have stretch days like i stretch every day yeah yeah um so right now we're in club season so like i'll lift monday to thursday and then friday friday's a complete rest day because we play saturday and then saturday like i'll do a pregame lift to activate my cns and then i rest on sunday do the same thing again monday with club we train tuesday thursday okay and then Wednesday's a good day where you can, like, forwards will do their scrummaging work. Do you have recovery work? So, mm-hmm. Yeah? Usually on Mondays. Okay. So we'll go in on the gym on a Monday, and it's a lot of, like, stretch and maintenance lifts. But then, like, you come in on the Tuesday, and then Tuesday, like, in general in rugby is, like, our get-after-it-day because you have four or five days, so you got to play next. And yeah. then, but then Thursday you start to, like, fine-tune some things. You can ramp it up a bit, and then Friday we go up for what's called captain's run, which is, like, walk-through in football. And yeah, it all comes back to discipline, man. It like does. on paper, like dude, it's it's written down for you. You just have to follow it, mm-hmm. and people still find a way to not fucking do it, man. Yeah. It's crazy. And like, do you think rugby or sports in general gave you the discipline? Mold like it? 
created this state of discipline which like you know you can tackle pretty much anything that the world has for you dude mm -hmm. like i think you you can see it a lot in student athletes especially at your fucking level like discipline is everything man. consistency and discipline it is mm -hmm. so i'd say like what i'm gonna tell you is what you've heard every time i know is that it's time management and competitiveness yeah right and those combined is what i like to determine as discipline right like i plan things far in advance my motto is if i'm not early i'm late and i'm competitive in just about everything sometimes to my own fault like if i like if i go out and mini putt with my mom i'm there to kick her ass <laughs> and laugh and like that's but that's like that's my way of showing love but that's also my way of expressing who i am like i'm i'm not going to let up just to make someone else happy yeah however if you put me in a room with a kid like i'm going to kick their ass but not as badly <laughs> <laughs> basketball is just fucking blocking shots well, and yeah shit. people got to learn how to lose like i learned how to Absolutely. lose Absolutely, i learned how to lose the first year i ever played Brother. a sport my team went one and 12 and i learned how to lose right off the bat and i like i've lost big games in my life i lost one-on-ones stuff like that and it's gonna happen so like the way He's i look fucking at participation through a trophy soon no it's stupid it's stupid it is stupid yeah these yeah. kids need to learn that like look dude you're gonna lose more than you win in life exactly the wins, you can probably count them on your fucking hands, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and and I look at losing as a way to learn, right? Like, Absolutely. When I lose something, I'm like, okay, let's get back at the film. Let's see what went wrong and how we can fix it and come back next week, right? Like, my motto is someone punched me in the mouth after I had the plan. But, like, what am I going to do to respond to that? How am I going to get up? If they knock me down, how do I get up and respond for the next time? Exactly. Right? It's not, I'm not going to stay down. Like they sure yeah you know what they got me down but like if if I have any sort of pride for myself my teammates or anything like that we got to get back up and rally you know and that's that's always been the motto. Mm -hmm. Man, look like you. These kids need to understand too, man. Like, do you do you have a message for the young kids? Like, let's say that the, like a young kid wants to make a pro in rugby. Like, what is the James Fleming plan? <laughs> Everyone's plan is unique, but at the end of the day, if you commit early to what your craft is but don't stop playing other sports so the best athletes are the ones that have transferable skills all across the board it's, yes, it's like dude. it's called learning and teaching games for understanding yeah. you learn about space you learn about territory you learn about target stuff like that so important but then when you find out what your craft is as you start to start to master things just commit to it like find ways to maybe make some sacrifice in life i had a ton of fun and still managed to get most of what i wanted to done in sport but I always found time during the day to put in the work that was necessary. And I would watch my film, I would go over my things, and I would work on the smallest things and try to make them perfect. And I think if you can work on the technicalities of whatever your sport might be and just commit to that craft, the rewards will be endless. But if you sit back and, you know, you just show up to practice and you're only your mandatory lifts and stuff like that and you don't watch film, like, mm. you're just going to be average. Yeah, talent is not going to bring you nowhere. 100%. Hard work and talent is going to bring you fucking wherever you want man that's what it is fuck if you look at the best if you look at the best of the best ever yeah like if you look at like lebron mike any of those guys like we'll, we'll go basketball route here right like lebron in 2011 12 like when he faced like his dallas mavericks penultimate year right yeah like he got in the gym with hakeem olajuwon and he kept working he had had multiple mvps at that point he was rich he had no worries in life, but he f he kept committing to his craft, and he found a way to get better, and he won two titles right after that, right? It's like Kobe, man. Yeah, he was the most blessed athlete in the world at that time from an athleticism standpoint, but he kept working, yeah. right? A lot of people could just sit back and say, hey, I got a 45-inch vert. I run a 4.4, and I'm 265 pounds. I'm good. But he found a way. Kobe found a way with his footwork. LeBron worked with Hakeem and got better, like stuff like that, right? Like the best athletes finding ways to continue to find that refine their craft. That's why they're the greatest. Yeah, and it's like almost, it's almost a mental illness at a certain point. Yeah. Like everything needs to be a W, man. Like Kobe Bryant was like, it was at that level at a certain mm -hmm. point. That Mamba mentality, man. Like when he dropped eighty, like you know, like it's <laughs> just, it's crazy, man. And I think these kids need to, they have to have some kind of adversity in life. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's the key. That's key. If you have a cookie cutter life, you need something to spice it up a little yeah. bit, you know, to to make you who you are today. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck, man. 
like um rugby uh let's say like rugby compared to to football like what what's the best to play <laughs> i'll tell you what man both are fun yeah. uh rugby you have more freedom and football like football can be you might get more glory because rugby is entirely a team game all right i could have the best rugby player on the world on my team and it does not matter whereas you give me you know a guy like tyreek hill or patrick mahomes or anyone like that can just break a game open on offense like we got a shot right whereas in rugby like it doesn't really matter like you have to play to the system you have to accept that like maybe it's not you who's going to score this time but it matters that the team scores right and with rugby too like we play both sides of the ball like we're not focused on one thing like you have that freedom and freelance of like this is a freestyle sport like things are going to happen we have to be creative like we have to look for things, make our reads and stuff like that. And mind you, you do that in football too, right? Like you have to read coverages. You have to run your routes properly, know when to stand, when to not, stuff like that. Or as a QB, he's got to read the play. DN's got to read the uh, – linebackers have to read what the O-line's doing, et cetera, right? Yeah. Um, but football is almost like chess, whereas rugby is like freestyle. So I've always appreciated that part about rugby where I can just go be me. And then football like – Because you can't really analyze a play in rugby, right? Because it's nonstop. You'd be surprised. Really? like film can get pretty yeah of course yeah um and like like i can analyze things happening i can go look at a game say like this is this team's tendencies this team's doing this mm -hmm. we need to counter with this here's what our team's going to do to succeed here's what you did here like let's fix that and change it to this it's almost like football on a film session standpoint but like it's just when you're actually out there it's a lot of freestyle once you get into certain parts mm -hmm. whereas football like it's not much freestyle like at the end of the day like someone every 40 seconds is telling you what to do yeah you guys are fucking animals man yeah the the rugby house speaking about animals <laughs> how was that so the rugby house so we never called it that that was other people okay but it might as well have been mm -hmm. because so i moved in there in third year and uh my best friend founded it okay Honestly, he was just looking for a place out of residence <laughs> and said, this house is sweet. Got it, right? And then he moved in with some buddies from home slash like a couple of rugby guys. And then those buddies from home moved in. Lo and behold, rugby guys move in. And then all of a sudden there's six rugby guys living in a house together. And it was big enough like it wasn't a cram six. Yeah. And then uh, so that was that. And then I found my way in in third year. So it was already kind of established at that point. And then uh, – it just became a place where, you know, the kitchen was massive. There was a big front hall. There was a front room. The basement had a projector in it, and it was big. There was tons of space and, and a nice porch with a rooftop patio, like everything. And you, and you don't find that in student houses so much. No, not at all. So we were quite accessible. And, and at that point, it was kind of just like, well, like, if, if people need the pre or at the end of the day, somebody needs to host a party, like, I guess it's happening at our house. Yeah. And it wasn't always that we wanted to do it. It was just by circumstance. It was like, we have the best venue. I get it. Wow. And we had some awesome times. Like, there were some great guys that came in and out, some not-so-great guys. But at the end of the day, like, we all experienced life together and honestly got something pretty special that I don't think you can replicate in oh. many other places. Wow. Uh, saw so many different faces come in and out, met so many people and networked. And, I mean, like, the reason why I'm on here today is because a guy came into that house. I met him, and then he introduced us, right? Like, Yeah, and so, I grew up with that guy. Like, what right. are the fucking odds, yeah. dude? Yeah, and it's crazy, right? Like, yeah. I, I didn't meet you till today. Exactly. So at the end of the day, like, it's it's interesting, the networking that just came from having that And house. it's important to have those conversations too, man. Yeah, it is. You know, like, people are so fucking glued to their phone and just, like, dude, like, yeah. people exist. Interesting people exist. Yeah. And these conversations are, you know, they're amazing to talk about, dude. And, like, you know, some random guy showed, showed up to a party. You met him, you know, had fun. Turns out, a couple years later, his friend from fucking elementary school starts a podcast and then we get in touch. And here we are. <laughs> here we right? are. Like, and that's, like, there's... Hundreds of things have happened like that, and it's, yeah. it's just a result. Everything of like, fucking happens for a reason, bro. I yeah. don't know what you believe in, bro, but I, I I strongly believe in that. I rate that. Yeah. Yeah. What's your future plans? My future plans, honestly, I'm not gonna act like it's all just like out on a platter, like written in scripture for me. Like the way I look at it is, I got a job now that makes me happy. Um, gonna keep making money, making money, making money. Yeah. And then just, like, start to advance in ways that I need to. Maybe buy a house one day. Um, maybe find a person that's right for me that's 
you know, I'm happy with, maybe start a family, stuff like that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm so fresh out of school that like, there's nothing. You're just going I, with the flow. That's, that's the thing, right? Like, yeah. I'm not here to say like, this is what's going to, where I'm going to be in five years. Okay. Like, cause that'd be impossible. And I think five years ago, if I looked at me today, I wouldn't be like, it wouldn't have been this. That's true. But a, lo so. a lot of people, like I ask that question a lot, but a lot of people say like, you know, oh, I'm going to do this, 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 but honestly, man, anything can happen. Like yeah. a war can start tomorrow. Like, you know what I mean? That's like, true. So <laughs> like, I, there's some things that I know, like I'd yeah. like to keep doing. Like I, I, I want, like now I'm still playing rugby, but it's like very recreationally. Mm -hmm. Mind you, like it's in a competitive league, but like, it's not that serious. Okay. And then it's like a beer league kind of, or more professional it, than that. A little higher. Okay. But like, same concept. <laughs> yeah. So, I know for sure, like, with my U Ottawa job that I have of, like, coaching and recruiting, like, that's something I want to keep doing. Like, I've invested my time in recruiting those Elaborate kids. on that, man. How would you get the job? Uh, to be honest, just, like, I got my job from the school I work at. It's just I knew the right guy. And to be honest, like, I had a successful career at U Ottawa. I connected well with those people, and then an opportunity arose for me to, to stick around in some way, shape, or form. I used to do tours with recruits when I was a player, so I know the route. I know what, you know. I know where to go, where to take them, what to say, and uh, what to look for and what to listen for and stuff like that. So at that, I'd already had experience doing that, and they didn't have a recruiting coordinator, hmm. so I'm the first one. And then at that point, the, the head coach was like, "Well, would you like to hop onto the coaching staff too? Because he's going to retire in a few years, and he needs some young." some young blood in there to yeah. hopefully be part of the successor squad one day right so for me it's kind of just be a sponge to him and take in all the knowledge that he has he's an accomplished coach he's a good guy Do you want to be um, head coach one day i think that'd be awesome and mm -hmm. hopefully like rugby moves to youth sport um because men's rugby in canada isn't youth sports like what? yeah like women's rugby is like like same league as football all that but like men's rugby is not a youth sport hmm. so it's run by the canadian university men's rugby championship which is just like a rugby canada affiliate yeah so yeah like so rugby programs in canada don't get the same funding so like the head coach for rugby is not paid nearly close to what u sports coaches would be paid mind you if it ever moved to u sports right like that's a very enticing career because then like if i got a u sports head coaching rugby job i could retire from teaching and then i could just do know, that i could do that <sighs> I wouldn't have to bring stuff home. I wouldn't have to plan. I wouldn't have to mark. Yeah, just get fucking jacked every day, dude. That's awesome. Well, I, I, <laughs> you work, work out a lot. Yeah, that's true. I could recruit, yeah. right? Like, but then I could just focus on the team, helping them get better. How is recruiting? Like, what do you look? What do you look for in an athlete? What I look for in an athlete, like everyone says this, but character matters. It does. If a guy's a shit guy, or if a guy treats his teammates like crap, don't or like yeah. I don't, I don't want him. Because one, that he's not going to fit in with our team, especially in rugby, right? And two, he's a liability because university athletes are public figures. Whether the community wants to admit it or not, they are, and they have a higher standard. So if I can bring in, if I bring in a kid who is going to go knock someone out at the bar or do something fucking stupid, yeah, you're going to. I don't terrible. have time for him. No. So character, yeah. But before I look at character, at the end of the day, it's talent. Yeah. Because if you're a good guy but you suck at rugby, well, unfortunately like you can play club somewhere and i don't want that i don't want that to sound rude but like at the end of the day hey, that's like life it's, man. it's 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 a high performance environment and it's another step up right so there's a place for those great guys they're great club guys and the community needs them but when it, you get to university like you need to start looking for the guys that are going to make a difference so talent character and then they obviously need the grades to get into university yeah um so yeah what's and the then, gpa is there an average like GPA or like how does how does that work more for like, grades? It, it all depends per program. Yeah. So like uh, there's some programs where it's a lot stingier and some where it's if you have a 70 you're in. So yeah, I mean it's we've had some issues with that in the past, right? Where like we get a guy and like he wants to come, he's applied, he's just waiting to get accepted, mm -hmm. and he doesn't get into UO and he gets in somewhere else and he's like, well, well, like I'm sorry, like you guys are my choice, but if I can't get into UO, I have to go somewhere and do my, and I respect that, right? Yeah. Like we had a guy who was a stud. Like he played, he played at Guelph, and he wanted to transfer to UO for his second degree. And he, he, they had won the OUA championship, and he was at a position we needed. And I was like, yes, like let's go. And he was a beauty. So I was like, like let's get this guy. Yeah. And then um, do for the boys. He, he didn't get into UO. Fuck. And Queens got him in. And I'm like, oh, like thinking about, it, I'm like, how the fuck do you get into Queens? But U Ottawa doesn't take you. Yeah. But depends. It was the program. Nah. 
but uh, yeah, so they he ended up having to go to Queens, but he's like, I'm not playing rugby there. Like, if I'm playing, I'm not playing for Queens. So I guess I'm just not playing. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I guess we lost one there. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Do you have a message out there, man, for the young student athletes? Yeah, don't be an idiot on social media. I'm looking right in the camera. Wow. Just just be smart. Yeah. Like and and you hear this all the time on the internet, but like I've I've already talked about like the commitment to athletics, but like some people have your opinions and like you might not agree with what people think in general. I agree. But at the end of the day, don't put it in writing and don't put it on the internet. Nobody needs okay? to know. Mm. Like and also like if if what you're thinking about writing is bad, like maybe you should you know reflect yeah but at the end of the day like just don't put it on the fucking internet mm. so like because once it's out there like it's done it, it's it's there forever and like again what i'm saying is said all the time but it's true right and like as a recruiting coordinator like we fall like when we recruit an athlete like i also follow them on instagram through our team account right and like i watch what they post and i don't want that to sound weird but like it's true. But like we're we're making sure that who we're investing our money in, basically, and time, and time, and future, and our reputation is a good person, right? And like, and you could be a good person who makes a mistake, right? But don't do it online. Yeah, that's that would be my number one advice for recruits. Yeah, hey, if if you're online, please do something fucking positive with yeah, it. Hundred percent. Jesus, like you can, like you can. It's your online journal of your life, generally. Yeah. And that's cool. Put on the good stuff. Like Exactly. Yeah. No one wants to see the bad, man. No. And 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 sometimes it's good to see the bad, right? Like if you yeah, for sure. If you've been through something or if someone's passed away or you want to honor them or if you've been through something and or if you're looking for help. Like stuff like that, right? But like when it comes to like discrimination or, you know, criticisms of others or being a shit guy basically don't fucking talk about politics god damn it yeah, just get, I, yeah, 100% just don't even think about it that's like, why i i avoid politics at all costs yeah, yeah. i try to be as neutral as fucking possible okay cuz i don't yeah. i want to do this for a living too yeah <laughs> like, politics dude, for me like, politics is a new religion bro i i had a podcast we talked about religion like i am very open about different uh, from people's mm -hmm. beliefs but dude politics there's no winning no no one is winning and there's people who are extremely passionate about politics who will yeah. just get angry at you. And I, and I, like for me, like I'm not gonna act like I'm super educated on politics. I know fuck all about politics. So I always ask questions. Absolutely. But then sometimes I've found when I've asked questions, people are like, "Are you serious?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, I'm just like I'd like to learn." Yeah. But then other like some people just interpret that, and they're so passionate about it that like I've always found that conversations about politics just never end up where i want them to yeah so i i stray away so we got it you're a trump supporter <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. no. <laughs> <laughs> james brother thank you for coming on man it's might be my pleasure you're the fucking Appreciate best man me. hey guys like subscribe share and i'll see you next week please give james a follow on instagram i will uh put his uh, link in the description have a good Beautiful. night peace